Hello and welcome to my channel. Today the Umbermac Revolta has been released. Oh dear. 1.61 million. Ah, I can't believe I'm saying this for a sports car. Come on Rockstar, what are you doing? Admittedly, it has got weapon modifications, so I don't know whether that's going to be something worthwhile considering of its price tag. So it might have missiles on it rather than machine guns, that's why it's so expensive. I don't know, we just need to find out. But I am pretty angry that that is 1.6 million. Hmm. Yeah. Right, let's go and have a look and see what we can do to it. And here it is over here. Admittedly, in black, that does actually look really good. Now, in real life, a lot of people are saying this looks a bit like a Cadillac uh, concept car, which admittedly it does. But, to me, because it's a Umbermax or Urbermax, wherever the hell, however the hell you pronounce that, I say it's a BMW Future Vision. That's what I think it is. Because it's an Umbermax, and that's the equivalent of BMW in this game. If it was going to be the Cadillac, it would be an Albany. So, yeah. Already we can see it's got a secondary roof and bonnet, which is ugly, but we can change that. The interior, let's go and have a look at it. Looks really nice. Look at that. It's a four-door XA21. I'm kidding, but it's got the XA21's interior. Now, it starts up like a... Um, what's it called? The Bentley Continental Flying Spur on this. The um, Cognacetti, that's the one. Right, let's go have a look and see what we can do to what this. Were you for? I really like those original wheels. They what are, are really wanting? nice. And they actually really do look like the BMW Future Visions wheels as well, so that to me he just says it all. Right, let's scroll down. You've got no bumpers. Can't change the bumpers. Hmm. Liveries. So we've got... I can't see anything in that colour. Let's just change the colour for a minute. Uh, decisions we'll go to the real life colour, which is a bronzy brownie colour. Bronzy brownie colour, which is there. And buy some brown. Your cosmetics are on board. It's my first ever brown car. <laughs> I never go for brown cars. Buy some brown. And there we go. That's already the future vision. If you could just uh, change the wheels into secondary colours and make a secondary colour black, like Need for Speed, then that would be straight away the right. But what I've just noticed is that you've got the trim colour. Hurrah! Finally! We can change the interior. Ah, lovely. I'm not going to have it in... Uh, I was going to have it in cream again, but I was saying cream's a bit samey. No rush at all. Blacks, like my XA21, quite sort of um, luxury. looks quite luxurious, but boring. So I was thinking more white. White looks nice. Maybe a frost white, so the secondary white sort of stands out a little Body bit. Work to match the driver. Right, scroll back up again to the liveries. So we've got basic camo, got Sankudo camo, sprayed camo, hang on, this seems like all the camos from uh, like the AP APC and the half track and all that sort of thing. That's because it is, which I'm not doing that to this. Respray transmission wheels, wheels I like, anyways I'll leave them as they are. And of course we've got the How windows, cars you got in this garage again? which I think I'll dim slightly, just to uh, sort of make it look quite official definitely not that I can't see out the window otherwise yeah, that'd Don't be right. she look pretty. and there we go now brown is a very odd colour for me I don't, I don't really like brown but on this it actually looks quite good uh, maybe I'm turning weird I don't know right let's go and have a look see, see you next how time. it drives In all defence, that actually sounds really good. That's the best sounding car of this update. It 
it's a beefy um, Cognacetti and Cognacetti 55 and windsor drop and windsor sound. That just sounds really good. And probably the most realistic noise of all of them. The SC1 is alright, I suppose that sounds quite good actually, the SC1. The Pyra, is it the Pyra? I don't know how you pronounce that thing. The Ocelot, that sounds okay, just wish it was a Jibushi, not a um, Ocelot. All the others are electric, I think, I think, I think of. Right, let's call out the MOC, where it is. Request MOC. We're going to see what weapons we just took on this thing. To be quite frank, this thing is actually quite fast. The handling is really good. It just sticks pretty quick. Was that 140 we were going there? So we're approaching the same sort of speeds as what uh, a Nero would go know, in this. Look how quick this thing's going. This has got to be as fast as the, that Ocelot Parara thing, or how, how you pronounce it. The, um, the Vanquish Zagato, that's what I'm going to call it from now on, because that's how I'm, I know it's called Vanquish Zagato. Okay, this thing's a beast. We're going to have to do a lap time, I think. Handling's a little bit squirmy when you get to high speeds. I see how fast we can get around this corner. Let's get around to my MOC. Look at that. This thing handles like a beast. So I was originally disappointed that this was 1.6 million, but this is an absolute beast. Is that my MOC over there? Hopefully. Where right, I'm heading. <laughs> I'll turn up because that's someone else in there. Gun waiting for someone to come around. <laughs> I'm actually really liking this thing right now. It actually looks really good. It looks horrible in yellow in the pictures, but when you look at it in a, in a different colour, like black, you know, brown's a bit of an odd colour, as I keep saying, but that looks really good. Especially the noise. I was expecting it to sound like the, uh, the Sentinel and that sort of thing. That was a bit of a... <laughs> a long loading screen, isn't it? There we go. Let's see what we can do here. Did your voice change? I don't remember you being that deep. Oh well. Whatever. Weapons, machine guns. So no, it's still got the crappy machine guns that'll cost you an extra hundred K just to put them on. Hmm. Very strange. Right, so let's go and create. Oh, wrong button. Get back in again. I think that's just as fast as the, the Vanquish Sagato. Go back in passive mode. I'm just seeing a presser flying over my head and blowing me up. Right, I'm just trying to think of a, a way how we can test this without taking them too long and making this video like an hour long. Right, what tracks have I made? What's, what class is this in? Sport. So it's the same as a uh, the Vanquish the Gato. Uh, jobs, play job, my job. Uh, I've got all these crazy jumps and stuff that I used to, that I made like ages ago. Um, test track four. What's that? That's too long. How long? Um, does it, take, it doesn't tell you how long it is. What? All right, let's do test track two then. We'll give that a roll. 
I have no idea I built this about a year ago, so <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what this racetrack's all about. And hopefully it's not going to be too long either. Right, so we're on off-road. Uh, sports, because of course we've got the San Chris the Ghetto, and we've got the Revolta to test, if they're actually in there, in the races, because I know sometimes they don't actually put the vehicles in the races when they first release. Not every time, but sometimes. Now we've got to go and find them, I mixed all my cars. Ah, there's the Pariah. That's the one. Pariah. Pariah. I have to do three laps each, because I don't think the laps are very long on this track, I seem to remember. Obviously this track's not going to be very well built, but there we go. One lap. Oh, fair enough. Maybe you go for one lap. Okay. It must have been that this thing grips really well, though. Does it? So I just gonna try my best. That's all I can do. And try and remember what, how I built this track. <laughs> Even so, this car is mins me in this track. I remember doing this years ago and smashing into every single one of those bonnets. Clutching going on there, I think it's cool. So we've done a lap time of 117.509. Now let's try the Revolta, which I feel has got a faster sort of acceleration and a better grip than that. I'm not quite sure I might be talking complete rubbish. So let's just go and put it straight to the test. But we've got to go through all these loading screens and all this. Because I'm live, technically. Aren't I, really? I'm doing a video live-ish. <laughs> it's a live stream before it's... Like, live. I don't know. I'm jibber-jabbering now. At least you've got something to listen to rather than just staring at the sky. And watching the camera go down. I'm actually really surprised the Revolta doesn't have any body uh, uh, kit parts or anything, like any bumpers or anything. I'm really surprised. But I really am growing to it. If it sounded rubbish and the handling was rubbish, then I really would have hated it, but considering it is actually really quick, well, maybe really quick. Turning circle is really not as good as I was, as I remember it being in free run actually. I remember the turning circle being really good, not really being so low down. That's better. Obviously that crash is going to be straight out. Yeah, the handling is nowhere near as good as the pyro. If you swing that back end out, it really does go around the corners quite quickly. But it's the initial understeer that it seems to struggle with, which is really surprising for such a big car. I was expecting it really to have a really bad oversteer. Yeah, the, the prior and mincemeat is me, but 
I don't want to do that again. I know it's wasting view time and you're going to be sitting here for about 20 odd minutes, but I can make mistakes, can't I? <sighs> One of these loading screens again. Come on, game. It's a shame it's night time. I should put it up to daytime. That probably would help me out a lot. <laughs> moon. Sport and super. No, not a super. Try again. My divvy driving. I don't even know how long this video is now. Probably approaching like 20 minutes already. No one's going to watch it now. Some random buttons and stuff. How did I? Oh wow! Um, how did I miss that boost? Like seriously? Not well. Yeah, it seems to struggle with understeer really quite badly. But then it is a big car, I suppose. It's going to put a lot of strain on those front wheels when trying to turn. Which is why it's really good to flick that back end out. And try and get it to drift, because I think that's how it's going to be. <sighs> See, the handling is just nowhere near as good. Yeah, the handling's nowhere near as good. I need to do a top speed test now. I'm kidding, I won't do it on my video. The thing on this thing is dreadful in races. I thought it feels better in free run, to be quite honest. It really doesn't feel very good in, in races. It didn't even a slower time without me crashing, so yeah, this thing is not as good as the prior. And the prior is cheaper, I seem to remember. So, that is my verdict of this car. It looks alright, I say this, they can't really diss it so much, it's not that ugly. It looks like a 7 Series really, to be quite honest. A BMW 7 Series, if you didn't know. Um, the sound I'm really happy of. I thought that's actually probably one of, one of the best, most like realistic noise. Because why would a old Ferrari sound like a ruiner? I don't understand that one. The uh, Viseris was actually quite all right. I'm, after driving it around for a couple of weeks, is actually I've got used to the noise. But it's still a bit cheap that they've nicked the sound from the um, the trophy truck. If they nicked it from, I don't know, maybe the Ruiner 2000, which is just a bit deeper than a, a normal Ruiner, then yeah, I think I'd say that wouldn't be so bad. But a trophy truck? Eh, I'm not so sure. But it's not too bad. Uh, the Silvestra, I actually quite like the Silvestra. That's a good good car. The Hermes is good. I just don't like the hair suspension. And the um, Ar the Artarch, or the Altarch, however you pronounce that one, uh, that is... That's good. I like the sound of that as well. So, it's probably one of the, this is probably one of the best sounding cars of the update. But yeah, um, <laughs> so my verdict in general, then, because I'm going to sit here and loading screens now, I might as well finish up the video now. Um, it looks good. The Revolta. It looks all right. It doesn't look that ugly. I think it, a Radius looks ugly. I think not a not that. The interior is really nice. I like the interior. You can change the interior colour. It's got liveries. Admittedly, they're army liveries, which are a bit of a pain. Which it would have some nice uh, upper mark stickers or something to go on the side. That'd be quite nice. Uh, it's actually quite fast at a top speed. I say uh, the acceleration top speed is really good compared to the uh, prior. But the prior takes the lap times because it just has that better handling. It just grips the road a lot more. But to be quite frank, I think it feels the Revolta feels a lot better in free run. I don't know why the physics are different in free run than in 
uh, the race is, but there we go. So yes, I wouldn't buy it for 1.6 million. I wouldn't even stick the guns on it, bringing it up to uh, near enough 1.7 million. That's just pointless. You might as well just buy a Wagner. A Wagner's 1.5, I think it was. You're approaching supercar speeds with this amount of money. No, it's just ridiculous. Well, we've only got six weeks left of um, tunable content now. We've got the Neon, the 190Z, the Hustler, the Comet SR and the Camacho to go. We don't know when these are getting released. Well, we kind of do. Because I think next is either going to be the Camacho or the Neon. So, yes. That's it for this video today. Thank you very much for watching my boring as review on this car. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.